Hey, good afternoon, Crown Point. Good morning, Crown Point. Whatever whatever time it is that you happen to be watching the podcast. So it's uh, Mayor Pete Land with another edition of Lay of the Land podcast. This is actually season two, episode six. Took a little hiatus last month, uh, but we are back to uh, reclaim our number one ranking. You lose the ranking when you miss a month. Did you guys know I think that? it's two months. In a row. Is that what it is? Yeah, no, we still hold it. My intel is bad. So we still are number one nationwide. <laughs> The number one rated podcast coming out of Crown Point uh, on the third Monday of every month. So, fantastic news there. So, uh, as always, we got a great uh, show, I think, um, coming hot off um, the Veterans Day um, holiday. And we thought that we would invite and talk about our own American Legion and our veterans um, that do so much for not only our veterans, our region, our, our city, but our legion is so involved in the community and does so much for the citizens of Crown Point that I don't think, I don't think the regular citizen knows how much the legion does. So um, we are blessed today to have the post commander himself, the big honcho, thank uh, you. Kevin Dvorak. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And then you are the president of the, the auxiliary. auxiliary. Um, I'm sure a vital role in the legion. Oh. Believe me, um, if it wasn't for the auxiliary <laughs> and the SAL making me look good. It's usually how it flows. <laughs> yeah. So we have Joan Molnar um, of uh, the auxiliary from the league. So. Well, thanks for having us. Um, so, yeah. So, um, Kevin, why don't we start with you? Um, you are the post commander of the Legion. First of all, what is the post commander? And let us know a little bit of your background. I mean, it sees you at different events, um, but you know, how, how, how'd you come to that? Okay. So I'm, I'm the... I'm in the second year of a post commander gets reelected annually in the first of the year June. Um, I, I stepped up and took over this role, believe me, reluctantly because I saw a lot of things that needed to be improved with the way the American Legion and Crown Point was operating previously, um, and and I think. Most people would agree we've made some huge strides in, in trying to integrate better with the community. We, we're available to our community. We have, a, we have a nice hall that people appreciate the use of. Um, you're not going to find a better rental rate anywhere in the city. Often it's free, depending on what your organization is. Uh, we do provide space for the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts. Um, American Cancer Society uses us as frequently, Relay for Life, um, and I'm sure Joan can a add to some of that. So well. are you, so do you live in Crown Point? Are you from Crown Point? Um, I, I'm on implant, so I moved here in 2007. I'm originally from South Bend. I'm a 10-year Navy veteran. Um, I've, I've uh, Probably on my third or fourth career, I'm a federal employee. So I didn't take vacation today to be here. Wow. <laughs> which, is, which is important to state because this, <laughs> this would be, this is my time. Yes. And uh, um, I've been a federal employee, I think, going on 25 years. So 10 years in the Navy. 10 so years in the what, Navy. What was your, what did you do in the Navy? I, what I did in the Navy was, uh, I was a cryptologist, um, maintenance guy. So I, I worked with under the guise of the NSA. We did special projects. I'd love to be in that those shoes today because then I would be able to weed out some of the propaganda that we're getting in the mail or in the news today with everything that's going on. But um, it was a very very small community within the military and um, very specialized. I actually spent more time on foreign ships than I did on U.S. ships. So is it one of those jobs, if, if we asked you, could you share any secrets, you would not? I'd have to kill you. <laughs> 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 we, we got a meeting later. I don't want to <laughs> uh, well, thank you, first of all, for your 10 years. Oh, I didn't know you were 10 years in. I knew you were in the Navy, but I didn't know you spent 10 years yeah. in the service. Absolutely. So, Joan? You have sounds like you've been attached to the Legion in some capacity for many years. I have been. I started as a part-time employee there in 1999. Um, 
I had a full-time position, which um, I had 21 years with a heavy highway road contractor, ending my career last July. So I'm considered retired now. Congratulations. Um, thus allowing me to spend more time on volunteer things at the Legion. And um, we support everything that the Legion does, the auxiliary does. We have about uh, 160, 170 um, spouses, women, uh, spouses, children, daughters, granddaughters that can be members of the auxiliary. Um, we are open for membership all year long. We do have a youth program that we support also. Um, the individual auxiliaries support the state district levels. We have a local district, we have a state district, and we help support their functions. Um, we, we support all the, all the things the Legion does. We help with all the, the functions the Legion does. We do a few of our own functions. Uh, one of our big ones is in March when we do our poppy drive, you'll see our members outside the grocery stores and the post office giving out poppies and asking for donations. Um, we strictly ask for donations on that level. We do support some dinners that we put on as functions. Um, have I missed anything? I don't think so. So our legion on Main Street, when, Adam, do you know, when was that first built? Oh, you, you guys would know more. That's, I, it's been a long none time. None of us can, so. we, have a, we both so, came here this morning and said we weren't sure yeah. of that data. Yeah, <laughs> so the, the American Legion has existed in Crown Point since 1919. And I think it was in the late 40s, late 50s that it moved to its current location. Yeah, I believe it was, it was following World War II that the, that, that location was built. Um, oh, okay. Well, so that, that, right that location right. was built for the Legion? No, it, I think it was a... It was existing, okay. and it had been expanded over time. I've actually seen some of the original hand drawings for that, that place. Yeah. And, uh, it's just one of those, you know, some of our long-term locations, you just say the Legion, and everybody knows where it's right. at, right? Everybody drives by it multiple times, all, all the time, and um, it's, it's important to know. We always say it's not the building itself, it's the people in it. Um, so you guys do so much partnership and, and work um, and charitable work for all kinds of groups. Um, so what's what's one of the, the, the big causes that the American Legion always undertakes? So we actually have a list of probably 30 people, three, 30 different organizations that we donate our funds to. So Virtually all of the money that we raise that, that's available outside of our operating expenses gets donated to, to some other group, whether it's uh, American Cancer Society, Ronald McDonald House, um, Crown Point Cares, and, and I just happened to have a check with me today <laughs> for that cause. Oh, wow. Fantastic. That, uh, that I want to make sure, since it was in my hand, I might as well talk about it. Um, and. Our, our focus is on our local community and local veterans, primarily. But like Joan said, we have programs that reach outside of our community because we have to. We're part of a national organization. But like um, youth in our, in our high schools, we offer uh, a, an opportunity for boys and girls in between their junior and senior year to go to Boys State or Girls State. It's a week-long civics program at a university that we sponsor. Uh, we pay for the child to, to it's overhead for the week. They get to form um, their own governments in a, in a very structured organization. And if you, we're, we're currently taking applications online for any, anybody who is currently a junior in high school. And it'll, it'll, it, the, the events are in, I believe, June of next year. I don't remember the exact June dates, July. but I think it's a, the, this year the host university is Train University. Um, so if I'm, if I'm a junior going to obviously enter my senior, um, so what, what is it, if I'm interested in civics or government, what? Yep, so that's exactly it, and um, better understanding how we operate as a as a as a government, and and I've never attended. Um, I wish 
I wish that I had, but if you look at some of the people who have attended, there's their current presidents, former presidents, professional athletes, a lot of different random people that, that we would recognize their names. And if you go to the website for um, AmericanLegion.org, I would assume, you can register and find out some more information about that. So, so if someone interested, we don't, they don't do, uh, I'm sure there's an application or enrollment. Right. So it's an online application. And once a child completes that application, the American Legion post that is closest to that school will be notified. And then we write the check to, right, to make it happen. The auxiliary also offers a scholarship to girls that are daughters or granddaughters of auxiliary members. Um, we do our scholarship in the spring. It is for uh, children in their senior year. Um, it's usually a $500 scholarship. Uh, we give up to four of them, and that is a local thing only. And uh, it's good for their first year in college towards expenses books. And you would apply through your, the high school has the applications. Um, they don't always advertise they have the applications. So you'd also be able to contact the Legion and they would tell us and we would get an application if someone was interested. Their, their parent would have to be a member. Okay. And then do they right have there. to uh, select a specific major? They, have, um, they usually, they have to write a scenario of what they're going to college for, what they're hoping to accomplish by going. And then if um, if we have multiple, then we have to kind of go through them and vote on, on which causes we think support our causes the most. Yeah. But um, it's typically not an issue. So it's up to four different $500 yes. scholarships yeah. for um, use that are have a relative of the American Legion post-20. Exactly. Wow, that's fantastic. It's great that there's, I, how long has that the program been in existence for? Uh, Probably for almost ever, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> many, so many years. Way, it doesn't and, get. And, and the American Legion has actually a whole lot of other scholarship opportunities. So while our local American Legion veterans group, we, we do not that I know of, but the state and the national American Legion do. Um, same thing with the SAL. So our Sons of the Legion also have scholarship opportunities that often they go unclaimed, which I think is crazy. Yeah. that's. I mean, that's great that the Legion does for, um, gets the youth and, and I wish I would have known about this one. Did you know about this? You're not too far. Well, you are far removed from high school. But oh, quite a bit. Pretty, well, yeah, no, I know the, uh, yeah, I, I, they do so much good stuff throughout. It's widespread and, you know, it's, you know, I think it hits every niche in life that it's just not that veteran side of it. It, it's, it all encompassing. You know, reach out. But it's, I have heard the scholarships and, I mean, that's just fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So if, if um, a lot of people don't know if, do I have to be a military veteran to join the Legion? Who can join the American Legion? Just about anybody qualifies to be a Legion member. So the American Legion, the core group, to describe it that way, are, are veterans. So we served on active duty, and it only takes one day on active duty any, at any point in your life. The sons of the Legion are just that. So their their fathers, grandfathers were American Legion members. So they were veterans. And then I think probably historically the auxiliary were wives of veterans that were members, either the SAL or the auxiliary. But that's really opened up too. So that, yes, that so was. unless unless you were a farmer back at, during World War One and World mm -hmm. War Two and you didn't have a relative that served on in the military, just about everybody qualifies somehow. That, the auxiliary did used to be the wives, the daughters, and the granddaughters, but several years ago we changed our bylaws. You know, and same thing with the SAL, so it's gender neutral now, so to be politically correct, because we re recognize spouses, and, and the American Legion was slow to the table on that one. Other service organizations made that change way before we did but um, 
original charter came through through some congressional action, and that's how that had to be changed. And eventually, it did. And I don't know if we have any women that are SAL members, or but I do think we have a man that's a auxiliary yes, member. Yes. So, so I think that's how I joined, right? Because my dad served mm -hmm. in the Air Force as well. Um, during the Korean conflict, so I didn't know I was because he was a service member that I was all about to uh, be a member of the Legion. So once I found that out, I reached out to you and how cool. do I do that? So yeah, yeah was, absolutely. So I think a lot of people think that even this, that you have to be a veteran yourself to be part of the Legion community. I believe that could be correct. And I think, so I, let me throw out one of the so core functions that I do. I'm also a district officer with the Legion I'm very active with the Legion and the um, Disabled American Veterans, which is another organization that's operating within Crown Point in our four walls. And we help veterans with health care benefits. We help veterans with disability benefits. We help them navigate through those processes, which can be can take years in some cases, and in some cases, multiple years, depending on the situation. But everybody's, um, everybody who's have, who has a service-connected disability, if, if they'll um, tie their horse to our, to our fence post, we will take them through that process. Um, and we do that at, our month, at the DAV monthly meetings, and, which, are, which are held in Crown Point or in Cedar Lake. And um, those meetings are attended by upwards of 150 local veterans every every month. It's it's an it's an amazing sight to see all these people coming in and the, the chaos that happens between during that meeting. To try to organize 100 guys to sit down with the service officer and hear and understand what their their complaints and issues are, and then they come back to us month after month and follow the process. It's the veterans themselves that you've shared stories with me, like kind of that there's so many veterans local that need that help. They they don't know what is even available to them resource-wise, and it's got to be like jumping into a huge ocean. I don't even know where to start, and but that's where they can and, start. And, well, exactly, and, and I, a lot of times the information comes from a friend, <clears throat> and the friend, while they're generally well-intentioned. They don't necessarily know the facts and the details of how to navigate that process. So we try to, we, when we first meet a veteran, we said, you, you're not going to understand what we do. It's going to take a while. You have to trust us. And if you, if you trust us for a little while, you'll figure it out because it's just so, so complicated. And an example is, I could be rated by the VA at 100%. But I only get compensated for for fifty percent. Nobody understands that math, and and I don't understand it. But our goal is to, if if you're a veteran and you you were hurt while serving, our our government promised to take care of you. We, right. we try to make sure that happens. And how you know because you navigate through that maze, how is it? Um, have you found for the, our vets that have the PTSD? Is it is it getting better um, to navigate through that? Or uh, you know, we we still have way too many people, way too many veterans committing suicide every year. That's why the last two years in Veterans Day, I've made comments to that effect. Um, the current statistic is six thousand veterans a year committing suicide, um, and I and I try to stress when I talk to people. That, that phone number doesn't only need to be called by the person that's in distress. It can be called. It can be called by a family member, a friend, a, a casual acquaintance. If you think you you've recognized a veteran in distress, make the call. Yeah, make the call. And the professional on the other end of the line, they can they have the ability to do a lot of different things. They. Send a police officer out there. Send a, a ambulance out there. 
they're better and we're going to try to take care of them. But that, that goes, that doesn't only have to be for veterans either. So that, that crisis line is really for, for everybody. And we just had uh, last week the rededication um, ceremony up at the Legion itself. Um, what you tell, it, first of all, it was, it was very well attended. You put, did a great job putting that together. And the, you know, is the yeah. muralist, the painter, I would say, yep. show up. Yep. Um, so what, what is in front of the Legion? People see that all the time, may not even know what that is. So that, that is a dedication to veterans from all periods, all wars, past, current, future. Um, so, as I said on that uh, couple of Wednesdays ago now, as you drive by, think think about all of the people that that represents. Um, it's Crown Point residents, but it's our freedom. Mm -hmm. um, the muralist Mark Paul John. I'm, I when when my girls were little, I happened. He and I were like one of those dads that did what we could with the Girl Scout group. And uh, Mark said, "Oh yeah, I'm a I'm an artist." And he's like, and I I tell Mark now I've known him probably going on 10, 15 years. But Mark, you're really not going to be famous until you're dead. <laughs> Great inspirational speech there. Yeah. I'm so glad you did that because you know people see that all the time, and probably more people than not have not seen it close up or taken the time to actually go and look at it and see exactly what it is that, that you have there. So and and you know we we as you, um, I know the city the city's aware we do a flag burning a couple of times a year. We retire, um, we re retire flags, U.S. flags, and we have a flag box right outside our front door that was also custom painted by Mark um, with with uh, some scenes. And one one of the scenes is uh, um, I, I would say more of a firehouse mural. We have a military mural, typical eagle on one side. And I can't quite remember right now what's on the other side facing the building, but um, it's you know it's a piece of art, and uh, we we love people to come and check it out. Yeah, it's it's really looks fantastic in the mailbox with the scene from 9/11. It's that's a phenomenal, nice. phenomenal job. Yeah. yeah, so that's the proper way. So if I have a flag. I can bring it to the Legion and yep, place you can, it in the... You can leave it in our box, and that box gets full all the time. I've got, I, we have probably nine 90 gallon like oversized trash bins with lids. We'll fill those up and then some before we, in between our flag burnings. Just, we're collecting that many flags. It's great that. That's actually fantastic because people are disposing of the flags in a proper way, and yeah, it shows that the community yeah, and then, supports that. And, yeah, exactly. and we'll we'll ask for you know we'll ask we'll try to get the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Babe Ruth League out there, whatever we're doing because we need a lot of hands when that happens. And we've had a few people stop because they see us burning these flags and they're like, "What the heck are you doing?" Yeah. They're thinking because it looks wrong, it looks wrong, but we're we're taking care of those flags the way they were, our founders intended for them to be taken care of. And then the, um, you're responsible for, in partnership with the city, the annual Memorial Day service at Maplewood Cemetery. Right. Um, that's been going on. Took an, <coughs> take my kids when they were little um, to go to that uh, ceremony. So and We work with that, all three groups work in conjunction on that. Yeah, and we, we put out the flags, and typically the Boy Scouts will pick up those flags that we'll try to recognize a veteran's grave. And if anybody's out there that's listening to this and we missed, missed your loved one, let us know because it's, it's a very imperfect. We walk around, we've got some lists, we, and 
and I walk around thinking we're missing a lot of these guys just based on, and I was mentioning this to Joan earlier, based on a, the age that might be on a tombstone, it looks like they were probably a veteran, but, but we really don't know. I'm sure. We yeah. just don't know for sure. So. We try to do our best. And then I, I tell people, and we've had 30, 40 people helping to put these flags out. And I say, when in doubt, put one out. I'd rather I'd rather have too many out there than not enough. Sure. Do they do that? Is that through the schools? Your kids did that. Uh, we did that through actually just personal, and then they, I know they did it through the scouts too. Oh, so, through the scouts. Yeah, okay. Some Boy Scout, Girl Scout, Dad, and, and so. And so in Crown Point, both uh, Maplewood and St. Mary's Cemetery, the veterans get recognized in both of those. One of the things, so Memorial Day, so you know, I hear people all the time, Happy Memorial Day. You know, what is so that people know what exactly is Memorial Day? What does it represent? So Memorial Day. So unlike Veterans Day, Veterans Day is more focused on. Let me turn this around a little bit. Our celebrating our our veterans that are that have survived. Memorial Day is more of a somber occasion where we recognize our past veterans. Um, and you know, two two very important aspects of, of what we do as a community, I believe, in a nation. We we need to we need to recognize why we are free. And you'll see we'll you'll see comments all the time it's like Freedom's not always free. In, in Memorial Day, when you think about the veterans who've given up their lives for our freedoms, it, it's clearly not been free. Right. Um, and ours, I, I think, for a community our size, ours is always very well attended. I, it I'm is, super yes. proud of our community, our citizens, to come out even for its, for that hour to, to pay that dedication and participate in I think Crown Point is a very supportive community. I think we are. No yeah. matter what function we're you're doing. So, obviously, very important. Um, and then, and then the Legion Auxiliary. We we're talking early. You have like the annual Santa Day we, at the Legion. We so also do players. like our own individual donations, and um, we're very supportive of the community. We we donate to the police, the fire, yes, you the library. Um, sometimes the fire department has special things a couple years ago, it's probably been more than a couple years ago, they were doing a special thing for a dog, maybe it was the first dog, I don't remember why, but there was a dog involved, and I know we had a whole spaghetti dinner that we donated all the proceeds just for that. Um, we try to support the local things. Um, we also give to suicide prevention and Meals on Wheels. Um, we do the Ronald McDonald's. Yeah. Um, we donate to the Legion if they have a certain thing going on for the veterans. We've donated to the Sons of the Legions. We donate to the DAV. And, and you know, what what's really important to recognize is the volunteer hours that go into all of these functions. Yes. Yeah. Nobody's paid. Nobody's paid. It's all volunteers. And um, I, well, I, I have people write down their volunteer hours. And I don't really total it up because it's too many to count. We have a ton of people that are actively volunteering their time with all these functions. But we, we can never have enough volunteers. So if you're looking for something to do, come and see us. Yeah, so that's what I mean. You're so well-rounded. You do the specific programs and assistance for the vets that are in need, um, the, the serious and vital to not only our city but our region and, and everybody that needs it. And then this more social um, and all the charitable. I, I, yes. Like we were talking about earlier, I never realized how much the Legion does that you don't publicize, you don't try to get do it for attention. You just do it because it's the right thing to do. But, you know, thank that's, you, you know, yes. the, yeah, thank you. That I mean, that, that really describes us. We're not trying to pat ourselves on the back. We're just, we're just trying to take care of our, our veterans and our community. And you just brought back the all-you-can-eat breakfast, which, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, but then not so much. For, first, you lost money on me when I went. Oh, first Saturday of the month, 
we, we do the all you can eat breakfast. Um, we do take a break during the summer months, but I've been I've been trying to recruit to fill in those gaps with the and I've offered to our Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, hey, if you want to do a pancake breakfast, here's the opportunity. We have a crowd of people already coming, uh, but they're also kind of breaking during that same period of time because of the school's out. Yeah. If, but if there's another organization out there that would like to maybe fill in one of those Saturdays, we have the space and we have the customers coming. And uh, a couple of the breakfast places down the street don't like like us on that day, <laughs> but and they but we get along with them. They actually they they attend as well. Yeah, and they're supporting the community too. But it's a fun thing to talk about when we walk through the door. Yeah. <laughs> we need our breakfast. It was very good. Compliments to the chefs. Um, and one thing that was done, I think it was last year, was one of the iconic uh, things in Crown Point is our tank. Right. Oh, right. Um, and that was recently painted. Looks fantastic, by the way. I mean, wow. Uh, how did that come about? And what's the history of that? How did that? What's the history of that? So, Jerry Huber and two other guys, and Mr. Geisen, and what was the. Order Geisen and uh, Dick Nichols. Dick Nichols somehow came across the state of Indiana, had uh, 50 tanks to give, give up. And they put a package together, apparently, um, and for, I think, and I, I, I wasn't prepared for this one, but I think <laughs> it was three or four hundred dollars. They, they, they paid a hundred dollars for the tank, and then like three or four hundred dollars to three hundred to bring it to, to br get it moved <laughs> to Crown sure. Point. Yeah, and then it sat in it sat for. A, for several years before it was actually driven to its current location. And I've been told that the motor doesn't exist, it was sold somewhere, but um, when we painted that tank, the engine cover had rusted off. I don't know if it's been welded shut again, but it probably should be. Yes, I'm sure it has. Don't yes. even try it. Yes. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but, the, but the, uh, the engine was still in there, so. That helped us, and I, I actually worked with a, just an Army historian to help gather some additional information on that tank, which was kind of interesting. They can look, somebody who knows engines can look at that engine and they, oh, know, sure. they know where it was built. There was 50,000 of those tanks built, um, it, and they were done in different factories, it, pretty much in the Midwest, and, and there's even a possible theory that that tank scene action, even though people, some of the newspaper articles don't believe that it that did, but when the Army historian came and looked at it, there's actually a scar down one side that's been repaired. They think it was a, like a howitzer scraped down the side of it. Really? Wow. And, you know, and I would love to know, so, so we painted over some things on that tank that we didn't put back on, and one of them was the name Sabrina. It was stenciled on both sides of the tank. Unless you were right on top of it, you couldn't see it. I've asked everybody I know what the significance of Sabrina might have been. Because um, I think the tank arrived in Crown Point um, pretty pretty much unpainted, and it got it was it's been painted several times. Um, and so veterans locally put that name on there, whether that's the name they, they picked. It was originally purchased by the VFW and then donated to the city of Crown Point. And um, th those gentlemen were also, I think all three of them were members of the American Legion, which is yeah. which is common that we belong to m multiple organizations, I, I do. Um, and uh, I'm so glad the city, because when I was little, big thing was we'd walk up there which was a hike and you'd climb on the tank right um, nobody ever called the police and we're jumping around <laughs> i'm sure we broke something along the way but now in many years now that's like off limits it's kind of sacred ground um so the city's kind of come to see exactly what that little area that little island represents that we don't put anything like banners or anything like that um, and then on November 24th, every year, 
as part of our downtown uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony. We do the, go to the tank and do a, a memorial there as part of the yeah, overall It's ceremony. neat on that tank if you go back to the history on, you know, the couple of veterans, three veterans, one bringing the tank here and then actually there was a, you know, some discussion whether, why do we want a big piece of metal sitting out there, you know, on one of those and then it was a partnership actually at the city council level that the council, the gardening club, in the Legion, or the BFW at the time, came together and said, we're going to do this. It's not just a piece of metal. It's a remembrance of everybody that, you know, lost sons at Crown Point that didn't come back. Um, and that's how it was. It was that partnership between the guard to, to beautify that area, the city, uh, the, the organizations to make that a, actually a, you know, a focal point where yeah. to beautify it. A neat story how you know different differentiating opinions come and how the okay we understand and how we, we work together to get that done. So. Yeah, yeah, so when you put it in those terms, okay, that does make sense. Why and it's great that it's where it's at in Crown Point. Yeah, yeah. So you, it's hard to come or go from Crown Point without driving past that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you just say. It's by the go to the tank and turn right. Everybody knows right. that. Yeah. <laughs> <You're exactly laughs> right on that. It's, it's, a, it's a landmark. It's Gardner downtown. For sure. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, so that'll be. Uh, November Don't 24. expect it to shoot anytime soon. <laughs> no. Like I said, everything's welded shut. Don't try it. Uh, it's all locked up like a drum. But um, do you have anything? When is the when is the Santa? What do you have anything coming up that you want to? We plug have for a the we have our all you can eat breakfast on December second, and um, if you're a member of the Legion currently, your children ten and under or grandchildren would need to sign up, and then we have uh, breakfast with Santa that same day. He comes a little bit later, and they have crafts available for the kids. Um, I believe there'll be some singing. Santa sits with each kid, nice. with each child, and then um, they they get a gift basket from the Legion. Okay, fantastic. Well, I, I can't thank you. You, you guys are, have my admiration and thanks, just as well as the mayor, but just a citizen of Crown Point for everything that you do, um, not only for the community, but for our local veterans that are in some desperate need of some assistance and well, don't know where to turn. And, and you know, we we have a donation here for the city of Crown Point and Crown Point Cares. So I appreciate Great that. Yeah. Gavin, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure as always. Such a pleasure of meeting you. Thank you um, for having us. Yes. So if if to leave it, if I want to have more information on our own American Legion Post 20, do I, what's the phone number that I call? How can I get that? Oh, stop in and see us. Yeah. Do the pop in. Stop in and stop see in us. Stop in and see us. Right. You'll be more than welcome. So, Adam, Anthony, any closing thoughts on today's podcast? It was very informative. Yeah, I, I think Crown Point doesn't know fully well. Hopefully, after this, they will. And maybe some people will. I want to get involved in, in help in some way. And that would be awesome. Stories. That would be super yeah. awesome. So. Um, thank you again. Um, I mean that sincerely. So. Thank All you. right, Crown Point. Mary, do you have anything to add? Mary is, you know, the silent partner behind it. So did a fantastic job setting everything up, by the way. I stayed out of your way. Um, so uh, Crown Point, this is the uh, Lay of the Land Season 2, Episode 6, signing off. So until next month, just uh, have a safe month. Bye-bye. This month's business spotlight is American Legion Post-20. To learn more about the American Legion, its membership opportunities, and volunteer opportunities, stop in at 1401 North Main Street. You've been listening to Lay of the Land with Crown Point Mayor Pete Land and Chief of Staff Anthony Schleter. If you like what you heard today, come hang out with us on the third Tuesday of every month. Lay of the Land is available on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. We'll see you next time.